Fusion Friday, once again, with none other than Fusion Phil here at CAD Camp. This week, we're going to talk about a little Easter egg that I have found that's been kind of sneak and released out to the public. Now, some of you already know about this and you may have already found it. However, due to the amount of emails I've gotten this week, I wanted to go ahead and make this video to show you guys a little bit of how this works. Like the title says, this is machine definition for lathe and mill turn machines. So we're going to go ahead and set those up inside of Fusion. Now, if you don't want to set these up, feel free to reach out to me with the email down below, and I'm more than happy to help you guys get these set up for your machines. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just start with my part file open. You don't necessarily need that, but we're going to go up to our machine library, and we're going to go ahead and place these on the cloud. In my case, I like to keep all mine in the cloud. As you guys will see next week, I'm actually going to switch over computers, and I'll never actually have to import, export, anything like that. They'll actually show up by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign. And now this is where you need to make the first decision about what you're setting up with this machine definition is, is it a simple lathe? And by simple lathe, I mean no live tooling, single spindle kind of machine. Now, if you do have dual spindles, a Y-axis, maybe even live tooling, I would recommend just going straight for the turn mill version. Now you can convert one from the other or the other back to the first. It doesn't really matter when you get started inside of here. And as you guys are going to find out, it's always easiest to start with the minimal amount of information to produce the results that you want. So for example here, I'm going to just go straight into a dual spindle Y-axis lathe with live tooling. And as you can see, is it's automatically generating everything for me based on that template file. I can go ahead and swap this out. So for this case, let's just say we're going to do a Haas ST, let's go 30Y. And then with that, you could change nomenclatures and things to make it much easier for your employees. Now, this is how I look at the current stage of machine definition, is you do have the ability to find your kinematics, set your travel rates, set your max feed rates. Again, very, very handy for things like your main spindle, setting your maximum RPMs. So when you go to simulate this, it will tell you if a tool is going too fast, if you don't have the machine travel. Now, keep in mind, there is no machine simulation, nor am I telling you that there will be or if there's going to be. I don't personally know, and I don't suggest that you ever invest in buying Fusion based on that information. Now, the machine definition is nothing more than if you're like me working on several different parts on several different machines, is allowing me to tie the post to a machine and the machine to the setup, making it much easier if you've ever done it, is where you post the wrong code with the wrong post processor, and it either tells you, hey, you can't do milling on the lathe, or you can't do lathe on the mill, or the code doesn't run at the machine, right? So as you can see here, we have automatically defined everything based on their template. That being said, as you have your X, Y, Z, and your turret, of course, because in this case, we do have a Y axis machine. If we wanted to remove that turret, we could easily, or not turret, Y axis, we could select our Y axis, and we can go ahead and hit delete. Same thing with our main spindle. Again, we have C for our main spindle. We also have a Z2, which a Z2 could be a Z negative motion to get to our sub spindle. Again, I don't recommend going in and playing around with this a lot until we actually have problems when posting our code. So what I'm going to do is I'm leaving everything as default, and I'm going to go ahead and go into post processor, and this is where I'm going to go into my post menu. And of course, in this case, we all know that Haas has a turning post. So let's go ahead and grab that turning post. If I can find it here, there it is. And in this case, we did an ST30Y. Little known fact, all these post processors in the background are more or less the same for Haas. They're just named a little differently to make it easier to link up to your files. I personally would put this in my cloud if I was you. I'm gonna leave it in my local folder so I can dump it later. As you can imagine, we pull these in and take them out quite a bit. We are using a next gen control in this case. And as you're gonna see is you do have additional options here. Again, not a big deal to set those up and pick those out, but just like that, I've created my Haas ST30Y. So let's go in and now actually add that to our machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unselect that brother Speedio. I'm gonna grab my Haas ST30Y. And as you're gonna see upon posting out any G code for this part, is what's gonna happen is we're now seeing the used machine configuration, the machine definition that we actually just built, as well as our post processor. Yes, you still have the ability to toggle and define things over here on the right. Again, the got live tooling, things of that nature. Again, got secondary spindle. We may want to actually set what that is. Presumably, I assume a lot of this is gonna start to get controlled by machine definition. 
But let's go ahead and post out our G code. And as you can see, we're not getting any errors or any issues. Again, the idea of this video and to show you guys is if you're like me and you're jumping from machine to machine all the time, for example, we have setup one here on the ST30 now and setup two is on this Fidel test file I was playing around with. This is to make your workflows much more streamlined and easier with the intent later on things like the limits of your machine as well as maybe. Again, this is a hard maybe. I don't know. Don't buy Fusion 360 based on this information is if there was machine simulation for Milturn to be released, you could obviously offline program with the reduction of crashes and other problems. Now, before I let you guys go for the rest of the day, I do want to tell you, obviously, sign up down below for the free commercial license of Fusion we're giving away for 1,000 subscribers. On top of that, go ahead and like, follow, comment, and subscribe to my channel, as well as these videos, so that we can get this information shared out to everybody that's looking for help inside of their Autodesk software. And as always, have a great rest of your Friday.